So here are the rules for naming alkanes and cycloalkanes. You first find the longest carbon chain and you name it. So let's go ahead and do that. So we can see that the longest carbon chain for this example has five carbons, which we know is pentane. The second step is to number the chain to give the substituents the lowest number possible. So I could number this chain from the left or I could number it from the right. If I number it from the left, I give that substituent a number of two. If I numbered it from the right, that substituent would have a number of four. So numbering it from the left for this example is the correct way to approach it. Identify and name your substituents is step three. Well, I know that this is a methyl group and that methyl group is found on carbon two. So I would write 2-methylpentane, and that would be the correct IUPAC name for this dot structure. I don't have to worry about step four because I have only one substituent. So when we see multiple substituents, we'll have to think about using the alphabet rule. So 2-methylpentane is the correct IUPAC name for this molecule, and from that name, you should be able to draw the dot structure. Let's do another one here. So let's follow our steps. Find the longest carbon chain and name it. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So this would be hexane for my longest carbon chain. Number to give your substituents the lowest number possible. So once again, I have a choice of numbering from the left or from the right. In this case, numbering from the left would give my substituents the lowest number possible. What are my substituents? Well, I have two methyl groups this time. So I have to use a prefix. I have two methyl groups, so I'm going to call this dimethyl. So dimethyl hexane, and those methyl groups are coming off of carbon 2, so I have to write 2,2-dimethylhexane. So when you have prefixes, um, you would use di for 2, you would use tri for 3, you would use tetra for 4, you would use penta for 5, and hexa for 6. All right, so let's do another nomenclature example. Let's look at this molecule. Find the longest carbon chain. So let's see, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and name it. So seven would be heptane. So I have heptane here. Number to give your substituents the lowest number possible. My options are to start from the left or to start from the right. This time it makes more sense to start from the right because that gives my first substituent a number of two, which would be lower than if I started from the left. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So that is heptane. Identify your substituents and name them. Is, is the third step. So that's a methyl group coming off of carbon 2, and that is an ethyl group coming off of carbon 4. Which one comes first, the ethyl group or the methyl group? Step 4 says it's the alphabet, right? You arrange them alphabetically. So E comes before M. So you're going to put ethyl before methyl. So you have a me an ethyl group coming off of carbon 4. So 4 ethyl, and a methyl group coming off of carbon 2. So 2 methyl, if I can squeeze it in here. So I have 4-ethyl-2-methyl-heptane uh, is, is the official IUPAC name for this molecule. What about something like this? All right, so this is a little bit more complicated. Let's, let's look at how uh, my longest carbon chain and how many carbons are in my longest carbon chain, right? That would be 8, right? This is the exact same dot structure. So both of these are going to be octane, so octane. Number your carbon chain to give the substituents the lowest number possible. Well, if I number from the left, I would have my substituent with a number of 2. If I number from the right, I would have a substituent with a number of 2. So it's not immediately obvious to me which would be the correct way to start from. So let me go ahead and just number all of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And if I go this way, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So let's go ahead and name both of these and let's see what we get. Well, what kind of substituents do I have on the left? I have, let's see, how many methyl groups? A total of five methyl groups. So it'd be pentamethyl, so pentamethyl octane. And obviously they both would be pentamethyl octanes. It's the same dot structure here, so pentamethyl octane. 
Where are those methyl groups? Well, on the left, they are on 2, 3, 3, 7, 7. So 2, 3, 3, 7, 7 pentamethyl octane. But on the right, my methyl groups are on 2, 2, 6, 6, 7. So let me go ahead and put that down. 2, 2, 6, 6, 7 pentamethyl octane. So I want to give my substituents the lowest number possible, but I've already seen that that first number, right, 2 versus 2 is a tie. So, so that doesn't quite work. What I need to do is go to the next number. So I have a 3 over here, and I have a 2 over here. And you always want to do the, the lowest number possible. So since 2 is a lower number than 3, this is actually the correct IUPAC name for this molecule, 22667. 7 pentamethyl octane. This is called the first point of difference rule. You want to give your substituents the lowest number possible. So if there's a tie with the first number, you go to the second number and compare those numbers. Uh, and if there's a tie with the second number, you go on to the third number and so on. So in this case, the first point of difference came with the second number. Let's look at cycloalkanes. So here I have a, a cycloalkane. And you, you name it the same way you would, you would name a straight chain alkane. You first find find the longest number of carbons. In this case, it's in a ring, right? So we have a total of six carbons in a ring, which we know is cyclohex cyclohexane. So that's my parent name. So cyclohexane is my parent name. Number the ring to give these substituents the lowest number possible. Well, here's my, here's my substituent. Right? I know that's an ethyl group. I want to number my ring to give that substituent the lowest number possible. So obviously, that must be number one. So which way do I go around my ring? Uh, well, it doesn't matter for this example because it'd be the exact same since I have only one substituent. So, so six carbons all the way around with an ethyl group coming off of carbon one. So I could call this one ethyl cyclohexane, or you could even leave off the one and just say ethyl cyclohexane, and it's implied that the ethyl group is coming off of carbon one here. So that's how to name a cycloalkane. Let's look at a uh, more complicated cycloalkane here. So, so now I have uh, again. I, I can see that it's cyclohexane. That's my that's my base name here. So this is going to be cyclohexane. So I can go ahead and put that down. Next, I have to number to give my substituents the lowest number possible. So. So what, which one of these two carbons is going to be number one, right? I could, make, I could make this carbon number one, or I could make this carbon number one. Well, first point of difference rule. If I make the top carbon number one, uh, that's going to give me two number ones, versus if I, make the, if, if I make this carbon down here number one, I have only one substituent coming off of carbon one. So the first point of difference rule says this could not be carbon number one. So carbon number one has to be this top carbon up here like that. So how do I number my ring? Well, I could go I could go this way. I could go 1 2 3 4 5 6 or I could go the other way, right? I could say that's number 1 2 3 4 5 6. Which way is correct? Well, if I think about my substituents, this would be an ethyl group coming off of carbon 3 whereas this would be an ethyl group coming off of carbon 5. So the one on the left is the correct way to number your ring because it gives your substituents the lowest number possible. So now we're ready to go ahead and name it. Uh, let's see look at all of my substituents on, on this first example here. I have two methyl groups coming off of carbon 1, so that'd be dimethyl I have an ethyl group coming off of carbon 3. So when I think about the alphabet rule, I'm going to put the ethyl group first. So I have 3 ethyl, 1, 1 dimethyl cyclohexane as the official name. Now, sometimes students get confused with the alphabet rule. Uh, think about the parent name, right? Think about M versus E. E comes before M in the alphabet. Prefixes don't matter. So don't think about alpha alphabetizing something with the D for di. Think about ethyl versus methyl, and that will give you 3-ethyl-1-1-dimethyl cyclohexane uh, for as the correct IUPAC name for this molecule. Let's look at another example here. All right, so what do I do? What do I do for this one? Well, first thing, identify the longest carbon chain. In this case, what kind of cycloalkane is it? Well, five carbons, so it's going to be cyclopentane. So cyclopentane. So they're both going to be cyclopentane here, since it's the same molecule. 
So cyclopentane. Well, which one gets a number one? I could make I could make this a number one and this a number two, or I could make this a number one and this a number two. So let's just go ahead and name them both, and and then let's see which one is the correct name. So on the left, I'd have one ethyl. 2-methyl cyclopentane, and on the right, I would have 2-ethyl, 1-methyl cyclopentane. And the question is, which is the correct IUPAC name? First point of difference rule doesn't really work, because I have, I have one that's one, then I have one that's two. So there is no first point of difference for this. So if the first point of difference rule fails, then you go to the alphabet rule. And you say to yourself, all right, so, so which one is, which one is going to get a number one? Is it, is it the ethyl that's going to get a number one, or is it the methyl that's going to get a number one? If first point of difference rule fails, you go to the alphabet rule. So E comes before M, so the ethyl group gets priority. So ethyl is number one, and therefore this is the correct IUPAC name for the molecule like that. All right, so let's let's look at one more here. So how do I name this guy? So it's kind of funny looking. Well, let's let's see how many carbons are in my longest carbon chain. So there's one, two, three. Four, five, six, and seven. So there are seven carbons in that chain. How many carbons are there in the cyclo por portion? Well, there's one, two, and three. So I have more carbons in my straight chain alkane than I do in my in my cyclo alkane. And therefore, I'm going to name this as an alkane. So there are seven carbons. So it's going to be heptane. And I have a cycloalkane as an alkyl group now. So if this wasn't an alkyl group, I'd call it cyclopropane. I drop the ane ending because it's now an alkyl group, so it becomes cyclopropyl. So I have a cyclopropyl group, cyclopropyl group coming off of my heptane, coming off of, let's see, which carbon is that? Let's go ahead and number it. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven. So I have a cyclopropyl group coming off of carbon four. So it's four cyclopropyl heptane. So when you have more carbons in your chain than you do in your cycloalkane, you name it. You name it as a cycloalkyl group, um, and then your alkane. Let's look. Let's remind ourselves an example up here, where we had uh, where we had. Uh, six carbons in our in our cycloalkane, only two carbons in our alkyl. In that case, you name it as an alkyl cyclohexane. And if there's a tie, let's say uh, if there's a tie, the tie goes to the cycloalkane. So if you had six carbons in both, you would name it as an alkyl cyclohexane molecule.